Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. Welcome to the Crypto Conversation. Today's episode is my weekly market sentiment report. So as always, the best place to watch this is on the Brave New Coin uh, YouTube channel. But of course, you know, if you are just listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, that is fine too. We're just going to do a, a 10, 15 minute run through uh, some of the major news headlines. And isn't it good to see Bitcoin back at 40,000 US. So just before we get into the show, uh, shout out to Nexo, our sponsor. If you're ready to grow your wealth with Nexo, well, you can do so by getting up to 12% on your digital assets with Nexo's high yield savings account. And this, of course, features compounding interest paid out daily. There are 18 available cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, loads of stable coins. And there are three fiat currencies accepted, uh, the pound, uh, the, the euro, and of course, USD. And there's 375 million worth of insurance on all custodial assets, deposits, and withdrawals are available at any time. Yeah, loads of great features there. So if you want to learn more, simply go to nexo.io. And that, of course, is spelled N-E-X-O dot I-O. Yes, and now it's on with the show. All right, so we start off on bravenewcoin.com. And yes, so the Bitcoin Liquid Index has a Bitcoin just over 40,000 US, where it's sort of been, yeah, jumping around between 35 and 40K over the last few days. And Ethereum kind of doing the same thing, just jumping uh, around, you know, the just a, a bit above the 2000 uh, price level. So, you know, we can see on, on coin market cap, yep, Bitcoin 40,100 at the moment and Ethereum uh, 2,300. So, yeah, you know, really good to see uh, some, some bullish action come back to the market. You know, there was uh, some talk of maybe the, the catalyst was, you know, that, that uh, Amazon rumor. Uh, which seemed to be just that, just a rumor, but it's it's amazing how quickly market sentiment can shift. And we can see on uh, on Coin Three Hundred and Sixty just a heat map. Yeah, a little bit down on some of these, some of the smaller altcoins, but mostly it's it's really about Bitcoin at the moment. Bitcoin is moving the market. Bitcoin moving quite strongly. So yeah, back to forty k. Where do we go from here? Back to twenty or up to sixty? I don't know. I don't know. Place your bets. Bitcoin fear and greed index. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know, for the last month or so, really has been at uh, extreme fear. And now all of a sudden, uh, we're neutral. Uh, could go up, could go down, which kind of makes sense because 40K, it kind of is neutral, really. We're not super bullish because all time high at around 64K is still some way away. But that sort of you know, that doom and gloom level of perhaps the old all-time high of around 20K, well, that is, uh, you know, 20K away to the downside. So we really are neutral uh, at the moment. So mm, very interesting. We'll just have to wait and see. One thing that is interesting is there's been, you know, uh, some of the the on-chain uh, analysts, people like Willie Wu and, uh, and Will Clemente, they've been, uh, you know, quite bullish for a month or so, really, in terms of on-chain data. So, you know, they were saying that there is a supply shock coming and, you know, long-term holders are continuing to accumulate and a short squeeze was building, right? And so, you know, with that sort of uh, pop up to uh, to 40K where we are today, whether or not Amazon uh, fake news, whether or not that was a catalyst, doesn't really matter. But, you know, uh, I guess to some extent, you'd have to give uh, a little bit of credit to the on-chain guys for, for calling uh, this move. So now we just need to see if uh, that bullish momentum can or cannot be sustained. Uh, what else is happening? All right, so inflation, inflation of course has been, you know, it's been rising. It's been larger, uh, more intense, and more aggressive uh, than many expected. So uh, the Fed, uh, Mr. Powell at the Fed uh, today has said that inflation could be higher and more persistent, more aggressive 
than expected. Not really a surprise to, to anyone in crypto. I thought this was interesting. So this guy, Joe, he says he's currently reading When Money Dies, uh, the history of hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany, which I think that's, uh, ooh, how's my history? I think it was 1930s, but don't quote me on that. You better look that up. Um, but yeah, one of the, I, I have heard this story before. One of the wildest aspects uh, I never knew was that early on in Weimar, Germany, when inflation was going up, people thought they were getting rich because they were selling hard assets for what they thought were insanely high prices and in, in the, the local currency and marks at the time. And yeah, just interesting. So I guess the, the kind of um, the analogy there is, yeah, watch what's happening at the moment to various asset prices. But um, what's the hardest money, hardest asset of them all? Bitcoin, of course. So Bitcoin is going up. Uh, the trick, of course, is you want your Bitcoin to go up and, and not necessarily sell it out to fiat currency, only to see it keep going up. But yeah, that is the tricky bit, right? Uh, old mate, Wrecked Capital. Uh, Wrecked is a good buddy. I should get him back on the podcast soon. Haven't recorded with Wrecked since, uh, I don't know, early in the year, really. So um, I will get him back on soon but I just thought this was interesting you know uh, this is him on Twitter just talking about you know the golden cross right so we, you may recall if you can see this you know you, you need to be a little bit of a, a TA nerd to, to pay too much attention to this kind of stuff but so the, the, the we had a death cross um, back in June and then you know so death cross is just when uh, a, a kind of a, a long-term and uh, short-term moving average cross uh, to the downside and a golden cross is, is uh, the opposite when they cross to uh, the upside. And, you know, a lot of times, just probabil probab probabilistically, that's a tricky word to say, isn't it? You kind of expect a downside on a death cross and upside on a golden cross. So all he's, all Rick is pointing out here is, you know, if this kind of you know, bullish momentum does continue, could see a, a, another golden cross, uh, you know, sometime perhaps uh, even uh, in August. Uh, so just something to keep an eye on uh, there. Now, <clears throat> someone who's not bullish on crypto is, of course, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and she's become a bit of a meme on crypto Twitter this week uh, because she used uh, the term, she described crypto uh, people, well, she described crypto as putting the financial system in the hands of shadowy uh, super coders, uh, which is quite a a fun term so I won't go through this article but she basically is just saying you know do we really want to trust uh, the financial system to uh, a bunch of you know uh, well shadowy super coders is what she said um, so yeah as I say this has become a, a meme overnight uh, so choose your fighter you know what's a, a shadowy super coder likes privacy contributes to an open source network wants you to be financially sovereign, a skilled coder, often works without a guaranteed salary and provides an alternative uh, to the fiat system. Above all, super, their superpower, they have integrity. And if you compare this to a shadowy central banker, uh, doesn't like privacy, makes monetary decisions behind closed doors, wants control of your money, salty boomer, paid to show fiat money, wants to trap you in their system. And the superpower, of course, is hyperinflation. So, you know, shout out to all the shadowy uh, super coders of the world. Who does this remind you of? Satoshi, uh, of course. And I guess uh, uh, another way of putting this is, you know, despite what uh, Elizabeth Warren may think when you think of shadowy super coders you know of course the wonderful thing about blockchains is you know they are open source uh, decentralized protocols that anyone can contribute to and anyone can uh, assess the code anyone can assess uh, the state of the ledger uh, right back to the beginning so you know blockchains are in fact out in the open tell you who's not out in the open is actually the federal reserve so i thought this was hilarious if you go to uh the Federal Reserve have a little repository on GitHub. Yeah, that's surprising, I know. But of course, 
this organization has no public repositories because you know the Fed, they, as we learnt or as we know, they actually do conduct all of their decisions as just a small group of dudes and they do it behind closed doors and uh, the rest of the world has to live with their decisions. So yeah, choose your fighter. All right, let's move on. What else? Yeah, tether, 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 tether. Uh, are you a tether truther? Am I? Not really. I mean, yeah, tether. Have they done some dodgy stuff in the past? Probably. Is it is an extinct is it an existential existential risk uh, to Bitcoin? Mm, probably not. Um, but you know, uh, regulators probably they are coming for tether. And so, you know, you're going to see more and more news about Tether and, um, you know, there'll probably be a crackdown on, on Tether at some point. Uh, here we go again, shadowy supercoders. So, yeah, it's just something to, to be aware of. That narrative uh, is going to build. Uh, it just remains to be seen how Tether resolve it uh, with regulators. So, yeah, don't know yet. Uh, kind of a similar... Uh, case with Binance, right? Uh, regulators are coming for Binance, uh, and it's not just in one jurisdiction; it's it's all around the world. Binance have they've been quite nimble, they've been quite fleet of foot, and been able to pop up in various places around the world and kind of not really be um, in any one location. It's quite a clever game, but you can only really uh, run that strategy for so long, I think. Uh, especially when you're as big as Binance. And I think, you know, CZ and the Binance team recognize that now. So there was a rumor that CZ was going to step down, but he's um, he's put that put out, he's tweeted today, that he's been misquoted. Uh, no immediate plans to replace him as CEO, but CZ does say that he would like very much to hire a strong compliance background CEO to show our commitment to compliance as this is the top priority of the organization. So there you go, it's from CZ himself. Uh, the commitment to compliance is a top priority. Look, easy to say in a tweet, uh, tougher to do in practice, but you know, what they have done, you've probably seen that uh, Binance have uh, drastically reduced daily withdrawal limits down to 0.06 BTC for accounts that have only completed a basic account verification. So if you want to increase your daily withdrawal limit, uh, you need to complete full KYC identity verification. So that's another sign that Binance are uh, responding to this regulatory pressure um stoner cats stoner cats stoner cats you guys up on stoner cats so remember when crypto kitties clogged up ethereum uh in 2017 uh well stoner cats did this yesterday um, and we'll get stoner cats in the middle uh, in a second but basically it's nfts when the stoner cat nfts uh, were released. A lot of people were trying to get them. So of course, you know, Ethereum gas fees uh, spiked, and yeah, so someone paid a 5.8 ETH and used up 20% of a block in gas, uh, trying to mint 20 of these Stoner Cat NFTs, and the transaction failed. So I guess that ETH just got burnt into the ether. Um, so yeah, it's just funny how that happens. Funny how it always involves cats. But yeah, so what are stoner cats? Um, quite interesting. Like, I guess it's like, um, yeah, it's a series of animated shorts about stoner cats. Um, it's kind of the cast that makes it interesting. So, you know, you've got Vitalik. <laughs> he plays a cat, Lord Katzington. Uh, Mila Kunis. And uh, Mila, of course, is married to Ash Ashton Kutcher. Um and then you've got Seth MacFarlane and Chris Rock and Jane Fonda. Quite strange, Jane Fonda. And I guess all these people are getting paid or they're an, an ether. Oh, someone was telling me that yesterday. So Jane Fonda, I guess, has got a pile of ether all of a sudden. Absolutely hilarious. Um, so, yeah. So if you if you try and get a, a, an NFT for Stoner Cat, so obviously these were sold out. They went sold out in I think half an hour initial price 0.35 ETH uh, for I think I think the first drop was 3,000 um, 
I'm not sure actually. Let's have a look on OpenSea. Yeah. So floor, floor price floor price is already up to over half an ETH. So yeah, it's quite interesting. All these cats are available now on OpenSea if you want to go and get one. The point of having one is um, <clears throat> they unlock the content, right? And I believe they're going to release uh, more drops of cats with new episodes and there's a DAO and you can vote on, I guess, you know, the what happens in, in the animation. Really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, so go StonerCats, StonerCats.com. All right. What else? Speaking of Vitalik, who was, of course, one of the Stoner Cats. Do you remember last, oh, I don't know how long it was ago. Remember when um, he got gifted all those, uh, was it Shiba tokens and by the devs? And then he was like, oh, my gosh, I've got a billion in these tokens. Uh, and so he do donated them to the COVID uh, relief fund in India because India was having a, a particularly hard time with COVID at the time. So it turns out, I mean, no surprise, but can you imagine trying to liquidate a billion in uh, obscure Shiba tokens? Not an easy task. So it turns out only 20 million has been liquidated uh, so far. But yep, they're, uh, they, uh, yeah continuing uh, with that process and they have uh, respected auditors making sure that everything is above uh, you know the, the funds are going to where they should shall we say so that's good to see all right guys well I mean that's pretty much it for today um, that was short and sweet um, but as I say good to see a bitcoin at 40k so it's just can we hold can we hold can consolidate can we Dominance, 50%. So that's interesting as well. Could be Bitcoin's time to shine. We'll have to just keep watching. Uh, last thing I wanted to say is if you are here on Brave New Coin YouTube channel, I, I expect you are. I put this out yesterday. Um, I, I had a chat with Tom Bilyeu. I don't know if you know who Tom is, but he's actually, he's big. He has his own podcast, which is kind of, it's a, like a more motivational version of a Joe Rogan where he talks to, um, you know, smart people. And, uh, you know, he's a kind of a, a, a motivational background, a nutritional background, but he's super smart, this guy, Tom, and he's going deep into NFTs, metaverse, anime, uh, manga. And yeah, look, it was just one of my favorite uh, chats here on the Crypto Conversation in some time. So this is it. Put it out yesterday. Oh, that's a big ad, isn't it? Um, do recommend you watch that. Uh, if you're into all of this stuff so yeah that's it really um thanks for listening team um yeah don't forget to subscribe to the conversation the crypto conversation and whatever podcast app you are using if you want to get at me just drop me an email andy at bravenewcoin.com otherwise yeah see you real soon this was the crypto conversation for brave new coin see ya